Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to the MongoDB series. Now obviously you want to learn more about MongoDB and I want to teach you more about MongoDB. So we both have interest here. So hit that subscribe button. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Now obviously, now moving into the MongoDB further is a little bit challenging, but don't worry, I have an exact solution for that challenge. Now let me walk you through what that challenge is. So let's fire up the Mongo command and we're gonna just open up a terminal, just type the Mongo, we want to fire the shell, and we want to use students as our database, switch to that, and pretty easily we can simply say db.studentData, and I just want to find all of that, what is there inside the database. Easily visible to collection is there in my database. Uh, just like two entries are there in my database would be rather correct. So what I want to do is I want to simply say db. Just type along with me db. Student uh, data and I just want to use a command that says delete many. You might have already seen that command. What is my criteria to delete anything? I just want to simply delete everything. So there we go. We hit enter and it says acknowledge true. Now I want to run the find command again. Now comes up the problem is we don't have any data so that we can learn more about database. You might be saying, hey, we had some data. You just deleted that. Now that much of the data is not sufficient to learn more about the database. We need some more data set. So the solution of the problem is I do have some fictitious data set for you so that you can use it. And for that, I need to fire up my browser. So simply just go ahead and type in your browser, uh, learncodeonline.in, my website name, slash mongodb. And everything is in lowercase. So go to this website. On this website, I'm uploading all the exercise files that we are gonna be needing. First, we worked out on this exercise file one. Now we got the exercise file two. So just click on this guy here and we simply want to just put it up there. So we're gonna click on the desktop and uh, MongoDB exercise. I want to place all the files up here. So there we go, file is up and ready. We don't need browser anymore. Just open up your exercise file folder, unzip the file. There we go and we got student v2.json. I want to fire up my Visual Studio Code. There we go, Visual Studio Code. Just drag and drop this guy here and there we go. We can see this time we have got like little more data here and obviously this data is uh, although really nice but you have to do a little bit work here. We just noticed that. So what you have to do is you have to remove these uh, curly, these last columns here. Although this is not problematic but I'm really sorry I forgot to just delete that so and uh, you just can come up here and I'm just pressing my command key and then hitting the click and we can just remove all this last column here, last comma. So this, although it's not gonna be very problematic, but to me, this is not acceptable. I don't like these kinds of errors. So I'm gonna just quickly do that. It's, it's not a big deal. So I truly apologize for that. So we're gonna just click on that and save that and there we go now it's all good so there was just extra comma i want you to remove that uh, please do that i worked really hard in preparing these exercise files and fictitious data so i think at least you can just remove this column i promise it's not going to happen in the future so there we go we have got all the data set up here now what we want to do is we want to insert this data in our database and here is the time where you might want to pause the video and give it a try yourself because it's always fun and that's how you learn this stuff. So go ahead, pause the video and try to just insert all these values into the database. Go ahead, do that. For the rest of the people, what you have to do is simply just copy all these values. The structure is exactly same, just what we had in the previous one. An array and inside the array we have got a collection um, and multiple collections here. We have got three values this time, name, email, and course count. Name is Hitesh and this one. Rest of all of them are fictitious here, uh, like super at the rate example.com or robert at the rate example.com, uh, May, Clark, Katrina. So we have got a lot of names here. Okay, since we already know how we can insert the data, let's go ahead and try to do that. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna say db dot uh, we simply want to use the same collection name here, student data dot insert many. Again, M is going to be capital for many. There we go. This is how we want to enter. 
Now, one thing, be extra cautious. You might want to remove the last parenthesis before you paste your entire data here. So now just paste the entire data and just close the last parenthesis and hit enter. And you're gonna see so much of these object IDs because uh, all we care about is acknowledge true. That means data is now inside our collection here. So now let's see what is there inside our database. And obviously the moment we are gonna see or moment we are gonna fetch these data, we're gonna learn something new. Trust me there. So what we're gonna do is db dot student uh, data, and I just want to use find. There we go. And the moment I use find, and in fact I use dot uh, pretty even. Uh, there we go. We can see it is there, but we can notice it says type it for more. So obviously, uh, this is not fetching us all the data. It's pretty obvious. Everybody can see that, that it's not giving me the entire list. It is giving me just only few. And later I can type it it and it is going to give me more there. So that's how we go. Now, interestingly, very interestingly, you need to understand this thing here, that if you're working with any programming language, C++, Java, PHP, Python, JavaScript, when you fetch your data, you actually never write this command. Yes, it is, it can be used to find all the things like db.studentdata.find, but to be honest, in reality, this command is not used. This command is made just for the shell. So there is a version of this exact same command which you might want to use. The same exact command is available for PHP, for Python, for Java, for JavaScript, and all of the languages. Whenever I'm gonna say that this command is used on the shell, I'm gonna say it command. Whenever I'm gonna say that it is used in contraction with some language, I'm gonna call it as driver. And because technically that it is. So what is that command that is available? That command is for each. And in case you are wondering that for each is a loop, yes, exactly, that what it is. It is, an, for each is a loop. Now, it depends on what you really want to do. For each is made to just go through with each of these collection and do whatever you want to or whatever you ask it to do. For example, since uh, MongoDB is like almost like JavaScript, use object and everything, we can pass on an arrow function here and this is what exactly we are gonna do next. Pass on an arrow function, use these guys, there we go, and a curly braces. In case you don't know what the arrow functions are, definitely you need to check out my free CDs on JavaScript on YouTube. There we go. Now, uh, since we are now into this, this is going to loop through each values here. So we can simply say that go through with each student. This is a variable name. You can call it Superman too. So student, and then you simply might want to print that. So in this, uh, we have an option of print JSON, and then I want to just print all of that. There we go. Again, this is a little bit complicated. Uh, not much, but just remember, find is for shell only. When you're gonna be using it in real life, you'll be using something like this, okay? And then, using the for each, we are passing a callback function or a fat arrow function, and we are just trying to print everything in the JSON format. Now notice very closely here when I hit enter, now this time there is no such thing as known as press IT for more, because this is dumping down entire database here. But you know what, the more fun thing is, that whenever you are working with such kind of uh, database, whether that's MySQL, Mongo, Postgres, whatever that is, you don't want to dump entire database. You selectively want to print information. Now, surely that in the programming language, you are completely capable of filtering out data from it. Maybe you just want to print name or maybe just you want to print course count. You surely can do that via programming. But it is much better to not to fetch the entire gigantic database right into our web page and then filter it out. Rather, we can restrict the database to send us less information or the information that only what we need and then filter it out. So uh, this is the whole idea about uh, the real world <laughs> examples and scenarios. I hope you're gonna be enjoying these such things. So in the next video, we're gonna see more about these databases and how we can restrict the MongoDB to send us, to not to send us all this information and send only, let's just say email. So surely we are gonna do that. So that's it for this video, quick short video. Make sure you hit that subscribe and let me know in the comment section that are you enjoying this series or not? Should I continue or not? A big yes or no in the comment section. I'll be reading all of them and subscribe too. Catch you up.